So in problem number 48 of section 3.1, we're given that a particle is traveling in a circular orbit of radius r with position function uh, alpha of t equals r cosine of t in the x-coordinate and r sine of t in the y-coordinate. So we're asked, well, what is the total distance traveled by the particle from some time t equals um, time 1 to t equals t2? Well, the formula for distance traveled in two dimensions is actually really similar to the formula in one dimension. So if we define the velocity of the particle just to be the derivative um, of acceleration, or excuse me, the derivative of the position. Uh, and here by derivative I just mean component-wise. So we take the der uh, first derivative of the first coordinate. That's minus r sine of t. And the second component is r cosine of t. And also, we're going to define the length of um, the vector v of t for any, um, any value of t. And this is just the first component squared. Uh, so in general, if uh, this were had the form, uh, said form x prime of t, y prime of t, where x and y were the coordinate functions of, um, of position, then velocity would be defined as, the or the magnitude of the velocity would be defined as the square root of uh, x prime of t, squared plus y prime of t squared. But of course in this case, um, this is just equal to uh, the square root of, we have negative r sine of t squared. That's just r squared sine squared of t plus r squared cosine squared of t. And finally, the actual formula for the distance. And this is uh, the distance traveled uh, from t equals t1 to t equals t2. It's just the integral of over um, the interval t1 to t2 of the magnitude of the velocity. So here I'm using uh, the term magnitude, but of course if, you only have, if we only have one, uh, one coordinate function, so if we're just in one dimension, then we're just looking at the square root of the square for the magnitude. Uh, so this is actually just the same thing as, um, or as the absolute value. So you kind of think this is being the absolute value uh, extended to more than one dimension. All right, so now this is equal to the integral of from t1 to t2 of this entire thing. Well, we can pull out a square root of r squared, which of course is just r. And that leaves us with sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t dt. So if we pull the r outside the integral, and by the Pythagorean theorem, this is just 1. So this whole thing collapses down to just r times the integral of 1 from t equals t1 to t equals t2. So of course, this is just rt evaluated from t1 to t2. And that just becomes r times t2 minus t1. So this will be the actual distance traveled um, from time equals uh, t1 to time equals t2. Now, the second part of the question asks to ask you to show that this is the same as the arc length of, the sec of a sector of a circle uh, with central angle. Uh, 
with radius r and central angle t2 minus t1. All right, so if we have a circle with radius r, we have an angle theta here, theta equals t2 minus t1. We want to know, well, what is the arc length of uh, this sector? But if you remember the definition of the radian measure of an angle is that um, the uh, radian measure is actually equal to the arc length, which I'm going to denote s, over the radius, which is r. So this means that arc length is equal to r times theta. But we know that theta, assuming that we're given um, theta, that t2 minus t1 is given to us and is actually in radians, uh, see that this is arc length is just r times t2 minus t1. So it actually, the distance traveled um, between t1 and t2 just represents the arc length of the sector of the circle where the angle is the difference in time. And that's the end of number 48.